Okay, we are on the Kennesaw bathroom here. Um, this had carpet on it for many, many years. As you can see, there's a lot of stains on the carpet and everything. Carpet in the bathroom is never a good idea, which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this video to show before and after on a carpeted uh, bathroom floor. A lot of squeaking going on too. The squeaking will go away once all of the dirt rock and the tile is put down on this. Um, I'm sure many homes have squeaking, but sometimes it's worse than others. Anyway, getting back to the bathroom. We got a vanity over here, vanity over here. We're not touching the vanities, although we will change out the faucets on the vanities eventually. Um, as I said, carpet over here. We have a tile here with some type of door rock or something under that. That'll go away. We got a toilet closet, which has the same tile and the door rock. That will go away and become tile. Um, this will be a 12 by 12 white tile, straight pattern, not diagonal. And it will go uh, continuously all the way up to that closet with a transition strip on, on both of these areas. Um, this bathroom was built uh, 91, 92, somewhere around there. So, you know, it's a good 20 years old. And they did the construction with builder's grade 4x4 tile. Um, same as on the floor, we have it around the tub and around the shower area backsplash. And we have a big old box here, which is kind of odd to me. So this box uh, represents nothing but wasted room. And there is an access panel in this closet here to get to the jacuzzi motor. Um, but otherwise this box is absolutely useless except a filler. So the customer had a bunch of stuff piled up here just as a shelving type of thing. There's no closet, there's no linen closet. So my suggestion was to actually make this useful. And what I'm going to attempt to do is, once this is all tiled over, I will have a cutout here, probably about a 2x2 two two cutout, of um, some framed whatever I end up using, either plywood or sheetrock, um, and I'll frame it out nice and neat looking and I'll have a little handle here with hinges on the back of it so that you can open it up, rest it against this wall here, and there'll be some shelves up inside of here to put towels and wash rags and whatnot inside of here to make this useful. You can close it back down and still have stuff lined up around it and stuff like that, but at least this will be some type of functional box instead of just a filler. Um, as far as the tub goes, uh, we're going to try and move this tub. There's about uh, nine inches of room between this knee wall and the edge of this window. And I, I like to get it as much as you've seen in other videos to get as much room of the shower as I possibly can. It's, it's a good size shower lengthwise. It's probably a good part of six, six and a half feet from end to end. Um, but it's pretty standard three foot inside of it and so if we can get this eight or nine inches of more of shower that'd be great except that the tub is here so what we're going to attempt to do is that nine inches is almost the same nine inches as we have over here and if we can move the tub all the way up to the edge of this vanity then that will give us that extra eight or nine inches depth of the shower from front to back um, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do and uh, hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, then we'll just end up with the standard size on um, the shower that's already there. Um, this wall goes up about 12 foot or so. And so what we're also going to do, getting that 8 or 9 inches, is build out this wall, that same 8 or 9 inches all the way up, so that it looks all contiguous and all, you know, like it was purposeful. As far as the shower goes, uh, the changes that will be in here will be this little funky 18 inch bench um, is, is pretty wide, you can, I mean pretty deep, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 times 4, you got 20 inches of, of wasted room here. Uh, rather large bench, or deep bench anyway, that takes up a lot of room from the shower, so we're going to get rid of that completely, which will make more use of the shower. Um, we're going to contemplate, you know, we're going to still be going in, the access to the shower will still be the same way, coming in this way. We're contemplating, actually, when I change out the valve, putting the valve here, and the shower head will go on that wall over there, which will make it nice because you can come in here, adjust your water without getting wet, um, and then walk in and, you know, do your thing. So, 
uh, customer has to make decision on that, but that was my idea. We're gonna have um, a little niche that I always do, about a 30 inch niche going back over here. And um, take the tile up to that eight foot mark. And so there'll be some bull nose that goes up and around at eight foot. Despite the fact this is a vaulted ceiling, it will stay at eight foot, and then the bull nose will mo more than likely be on the outside of this wall right here. And so this is the tile that we're using pretty standard uh, white tile, ceramic. Um, not too fond of ceramics, but this is what the customer picked out. So this will be the field tile, this is a 12 by 12. This will go on the floor um, and it will also go on the wall in the shower. Um, this is the bull nose, a matching bull nose that goes up, you know, that matches it. And so we'll use this bull nose on the outside portion of the shower as well as you know framing out the niche which I always do. This uh, is a 6x6 six six tile which they're wanting in their shower floor. Now normally I don't like doing a 6x6 six six or anything larger than a 4x4 four four on the shower floor just because of you know getting that slope down to the drain. Um, so we'll see. Um, we might try and change that out with 4x4. Four this is um, a 12 by 12 mosaic uh, glass, a little bit of glass in there, uh, mosaic tile. We're just using this as a um, as, um, strip that's going to go around about eye level. So probably about four or five of these will be taken off of each one of these mats. And that will be the strip going around at eye level inside the shower. And um, that's about it on this shower. Um, I don't anticipate any issues on here. There's really not any after 20 years except for, you know, a lot of the bad caulking and pulling away of areas. And then of course, just the fact that it's builder's standard grade tile. Um, there are some minor issues in here, maintenance issues, but nothing that I see that's just jumping out at me right now. Um, I do anticipate a lot of moisture in the shower pan. Uh, just because of the fact of the type of tile and grout that was used um, and then the 20 years of saturation. So there might be some moisture in there, but you know, overall um, it's, there's, there's not uh, an issue that really, you know, yells out at me right now. But I'm going to get started on the demo and uh, if there's something else you need to see, then I will video it. Okay, I am uh, almost done with this uh, tear out of the shower that you just saw and the floor and everything is gone. Um, but I got into the shower pan over here and there's a couple issues that I wanted to talk about, which is the only reason I'm starting up the video again before the finish. Um, in fact, um, I just had something on YouTube where somebody had asked me about a shower pan that I had tore out and could I show the process of build back? And I tend to not show the process that I use because every Tyler has a different method. Um, and I don't expect a homeowner to uh, ever pour a shower pan, even with the DIY videos that they see. Um, but what I do try and do is if you hire somebody, the whole point of my videos is usually if you hire somebody, take heed to some of the tips that I'm showing you so that if the tile guy that you're using starts doing something that you've seen in my videos and you can stop because, I mean, just stop him in his tracks because a lot of this stuff causes damage um, over time and is done incorrectly. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on here that is kind of laughable. Um, they wrap the seat that was in here, um, but they use a secondary piece to install. They just never glued the secondary piece together, so it became really useless. Um, I don't know why they would do that. It doesn't make any sense to me. In addition, there's a lot of nail holes um, where they put the pan in, the nail holes are very low. In fact, there's one down here, right at the line of the shower pan itself. So they're they're using nails on here to attach the pan, but but they're using like like a whole bunch. I mean, you know, in this side alone, I mean, it's just sloppy pan work is all it amounts to. These pieces are kind of scrapped in here. It's hard to see them, but um, and they're nailed in, but they they were never glued. And in addition to this one. Um, this one was folded over where the corner is, which it should be, um, but it's just a big mess. Uh, part of doing any type of job is, is neatness, even if nobody will see it. 
is neatness and and here they just had way too much pan liner going on and they never cut off the excess so they just folded it twice on itself and you know it's just messy um, and then it slopes down to who knows where you know like the slope of, of this folded piece goes all the way down at some point way back there um, beyond where it's going to do any good because now you have another fold you know that's allowing any moisture which moisture will go through to the bottom of here and out where my finger is so so I mean literally if any moisture ever penetrates through here you got water issues because the pan was never folded and attached correctly uh, it's a big issue um, but the bigger issue and I showed it in another video before is actually setting whatever whatever wall board you use into the pan all pans to get moisture it's not a matter of if it's just a matter of how much and when and how long over time it will destroy something um, some pans as you've seen in some of my other videos are extremely wet and some of them are just damp um, this one is probably somewhere in between it's pretty damp uh, the mortar mix that we use to pour pans will turn to sand after a while just because of the chemical compounds of water um, once it gets saturated with water long enough it's got nowhere to go then the mortar mix literally turns to sand and this is what's happening here um, because there's a lot a lot of moisture build up in here over the years and one of the reasons is because they use this concrete um, they, it's not a board it's actually they they set this hard concrete in here and, and embedded it into the pan and then what they did is they came in with just sheetrock uh, in fact I think it was grain board and they set they set it on top of it I mean literally like this piece I think fits like a puzzle right there so they, they set the, the concrete in, in into the pan which is wrong um, because it's going to absorb moisture but then of course sheetrock absorbs even more and so all it needs is you know a couple inches to go up to absorb moisture and into the sheetrock and if you look at the sheetrock over the last however many years I think this house has been around about 20 years the sheetrock just crumbles in my hand um, because it's just been exposed to moisture off and on so many times in fact th this board here has a lot of moisture um, this is corner bead that goes on the outside wall and it's just rusted out to almost nothing um, and so this is all caused by moisture and anytime you're building a shower, uh, moisture is not what you want on your wall board. And that's what they've done. They've, they've literally set this concrete stuff into the pan where it can get moist. And then it absorbs water and comes up and, and, and then gets into the sheetrock, which is really stupid uh, to do that. And like, even if they use sheetrock, they should have at least red guarded it. But at the very minimum, not have your wall board inside the pan. Just dumb. I just can't even believe that some of these builders are doing what they're doing and that it all passes. Uh, anyway, so that's my diatribe on that. There's, there's this some way, there's this thought. I don't know that if you build it better that it'll last longer, um, which is true. But if you build it better and then finish it crappy, then it's not going to last. They actually use wire mesh and concrete on the curb, um, which again, I don't, I don't go to that extent. But they thought, wow, this is going to be really solid. I got wire mesh and I've got concrete, then I got tile on top of that. And guess what? The method didn't work because, I mean, this whole pan top is moist. I mean, literally, it's just, it's just saturated with water. The curb should never have that. And, and you know, they, they can go to all the measures in the world and using the best products possible and just make sure that, man, this really looks good before you tile it. It looks like it's really sturdy, but then the tiling part is done wrong and, and all the other issues involved uh, cause it to be a crappy job anyway. So don't get caught up on, on the looks of stuff, you know, more more to the point get caught up on the construction method and that's what I'm trying to show you here so I'll finish up this demo here alright we're on the last day of this bathroom um, we have put in all the floor tile this is actually um, a 12 by 12 porcelain it's a glazed porcelain um, I don't particularly like it a couple of reasons um, although I like porcelain a lot this has a glaze over it so in other words um, 
it's not white. You know, porcelain is usually the same color through and through, and so this isn't white through and through. This is actually gray on the sides of it, and of course they went with the gray grout. So, because uh, there are some gray shades in here, but um, uh, still I don't like it. The, the surface of here is, is a glaze, so it's the same as ceramic. When you do a cut on this, if you look real closely on here, when you do a cut on this, some of the glaze comes up. This is grout, but some of the glaze comes off of the edge here. I used a brand new blade on my saw, and still I had some jagged cuts when I was doing cuts, so that's kind of why I don't like this. But that's kind of the exception, not the rule with porcelain. <coughs> but anyway, um, all of this got floor got tore out, and of course this tile got put on. There was squeaking here before. If you remember, there was also carpet, but there was squeaking going on here. And uh, putting dirt rock and tile down almost always takes away the squeaking. So no more of that. Little toilet area got done also. And uh, the walls kind of look raggedy because there was wallpaper on here before the owner is going to actually paint these walls eventually. So that's, that's why these walls look bad. Um, so the quarter round and all that stuff got put on. Uh, got new faucets on both of these vanities. Faucet here, that's their color scheme. Uh, another one here. If you remember this tub over here, um, the tub and the box, there was a box here that was very big that served no purpose whatsoever. And I, I proposed actually putting a lid on the box so they can use this area for storage, you know, with towels and uh, wash rags or whatever, you know, toiletries. Um, which is what I did, but in addition to that they wanted a larger shower which they got um, And they wanted the knee wall which I had you know taken down and I moved it They wanted the knee wall moved up to the edge of the window um, So I built a new knee wall. I moved the tub uh, I think it was about eight or nine inches to the left here moved everything over the tub used to be symmetrical between this window and now it's not because that eight or nine inches you see over there the tub got pushed over, which means that this box got chopped off. So I chopped off eight or nine inches off of that box as well and replumbed the tub and everything, put a new faucet on uh, to match the color scheme and, um, you know, of course, the pop up and all this stuff. Um, so, of course, the face of the tub got retiled. Um, and the box um, is now a practical thing, you know, they put some shelf boards down there and of course she rocked it in so you know it would be all contiguous um, but now she can put towels and wash rag and stuff like that in there so it's a usable box um, and then there's a shower and the shower got done in the same white porcelain and they have matching bullnose with this white porcelain that I was able to put on the edge here edge that out all the way around the top um, to the eight foot part this is actually a 10 foot ceiling. Oh, by the way, this wall got this eight or nine inches also had to go with that in order for everything to line up with the knee wall. Um, but anyway, so the bull nose got put all the way around. I also use the bull nose as I always do to frame out the niche. And of course I built a niche. The shower head used to be here, if you remember. So I replumbed that and went down into the floor and put a new shower head on that side with a new fixture. Um, and the shower floor um, is also um, a porcelain, it's a glazed porcelain that pretty much matches also the wall tile um, and this is a 2x2 two two. and um, of course the drain got moved from where it was to over there. Uh, these I really like, these are contiguous curved tops is what I call them but it's just a solid piece of marble in this case uh, but they also come in granite and different types of things. Um, I wish they would make them in five and a half inches, uh, five inches rather, because that's what my final curb is. This is a six inch piece, and because of the six inches, you get an inch going out on that side. And I really don't like that, um, but it is what it is. So um, I could shade that off, but it wouldn't be a finished home product at that point. Um, so I left it as is. <coughs> um, it's a much bigger shower than it used to be. It is four, almost four, it's 42 or 44 inches from left to right, six foot from front to back. So um, it's pretty nice. And then this mosaic tile, I think six rows, six pieces of this um, all the way around. So this is, this is done.
This is a finished product and uh, I'm out of here and on to the next one.